Welcome back folks for a new series on my channel that I like to promote as what if to things that might happen to all the tanks. So currently we have the Panzer 58 that was introduced a few weeks ago and this is actually a Swiss medium tank even though they introduced it as a German tier 8 premium. So after knowing that this vehicle alongside with a few Hungarian tanks were going to be German, this proves that we're not getting the European tech tree immediately or relatively soon. So this kind of disappoints a lot of players and today I have a special guest to talk about what if the Swiss medium tank or the tank destroyers were implemented into World of Tanks. So today we have Mizu Teo and he's one of my longtime subscribers. So he'll start talking about the Switzerland and their tanks and stuff. So go right ahead. <laughs> Yeah, grazie and welcome to uh, What If on Sam's channel. Yeah. Uh, what did I say now? <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not that easy, huh? It's not that easy. Yeah, go right in. So talk about like what's like Switzerland like or something, because most of my viewers are Americans or Germans or okay. British, so... Okay, well then I pretty much know what to say. Okay, so just yeah. Talk. You know, we just edit edit it out. No, go go right ahead. Everything's oh. live. <laughs> Every you you get oh, to have, God, you get to feel how I feel when I try to record stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, Switzerland, uh, most most of the time a neutral country, uh, especially World War One and ongoing. Uh, that which means they never couldn't have themselves into a war or anything like it. Which, in the, in the other hand, meant that they could buy tanks from pretty much all over the place. May it be Czechoslovakia, may it be France, may it be Germany. Wasn't, like, wasn't during the peace treaty, like, they couldn't buy tanks from, you know, different countries? Like, for example, during the Korean War, they cannot buy tanks from the Allies because they have signed a neutral treaty with North Korea or something like that. But... Oh, well, I just... I'm just telling what I know. Okay, go right ahead. I mean, <laughs> different people, different sources, uh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's history. Swiss history is not as well like, documented. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyway, where was I? So, what's yes. Switzerland like in a, as a country? Is it cold or is it... It's obviously cold, but, you know. Uh, it's not actually cold because last week we just had a heat wave reaching yeah. temperatures up to 70, uh, 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Which is quite hot, uh, but we, we mostly have a mixed country. There is the uh, flatlands around Zurich and Geneva and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and Bern. And then we have the Alps, which is just like the uh, cold part of Switzerland. And there is Ticino, Ticino which is like uh, Italia, full sunshine, almost no rain. And mm -hmm. when it rains, it rains uh, buckets. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Swiss tanks overall, they had to be good for fighting in mountain mount, mountain areas. Okay. Which meant pretty much just like the Japanese, nothing really slow, nothing immobile, fast, mobile tanks with got good gun depression and yeah. Okay. That's overall the main uh, criteria for Swiss tank designs and okay. what tanks they buy from okay. other countries. So, all right, so you can see the camouflage patterns right here. That are... yeah. uh, just going through the camouflage panels. The winter camo, the first one, is actually from the current uh, Nahkampfkanone 2, which is being shown for display in Wolf, uh, Waffenplatz Thun, so Waffenmuseum, um, Panzermuseum Thun, excuse me. Second winter camo is from the Nahkampfkanone 1, Ausführung 1, also from Panzermuseum Thun. Is it, uh, summer of... is it currently yeah. used on the Leopard 2s? And other uh, no, that's one of the uh, summer camos. Oh, okay. But not even that. The models, the models are just shown on those two tanks. Summer camo, we, first we have different versions. Uh, first one you see is from a Panzer 68, 
Okay. Second one is from a Swiss military armored car. Okay. And third one is from some tracked vehicle, also from Switzerland. Okay. I do not quite remember which one. Okay. Uh, Desert Desert Camo, then again, mostly improve, uh, improvised. Okay. Uh, first one shown is from a Panzer 57, which is Centurion Mark 7 slash 1, or is that Mark, Mark 7, with the British 105. Okay. And second one is from a Swiss Renault FT. Okay. So, talk a little bit about the premium consumable. How do you pronounce yeah. this? Rusty. Er, uh, Rusty. Rusty? Okay. Rusty, yeah. I guess. So, what is it? Um, it's, it's just like grated potatoes uh, mm. formed into more, more like patties and fried in a pan with uh, most of the time butter. Okay. Uh, there are special variations, some of them with bacon, some of them with uh, eggs, and yeah. It okay. was mostly, at the beginning of time, it was mostly made in Bern, okay. but over the time it just got uh, nationwide. It is, even on, on the Swiss people, it is considered a national okay. yeah, food. So it's like a, well, since my uh, most of my viewers are American, so it's like a hash brown or hush puppy, if you, or... Hush well, then again, you have okay. to explain what a hush puppy exactly is. It's basically to, it's tomato smushed into a pancake thing. So it's smushed into a patty. So that's basically what it is. All right, so it's, yeah, it's just plain potato. Yeah. With a bit of seasoning. Yeah. And here is the decal for the vehicles. It's the shield sign with the cross. I mean, Switzerland is known for the their neutrality. So. They are very famous for being the first or the country to introduce uh, the Red Cross. That's why the flag is inverted or the Red Cross is inverted symbol of their flag. So, we could just say the flag is a big plus. Yeah. So yeah. there is the Literally. decal. Yeah. So here is the tech tree for the Swiss. So basically we have three tech lines. The first one is the famous medium tech line. That's the main one. Then we have the tank destroyer line on the top, and then the artillery on the bottom. Now, earlier yeah, stages, was... yeah, the early stages were mostly capture French vehicles. So uh, not really, the, the not Renault really. FT, yeah, yeah, it is actually is... a proper bot. Right, use... bot, bot, and as well as the the Lloyd carrier. So there were like other countries that they, like the Swiss took from other countries. So it's not actually Swiss developed tanks but later on we have decently like gen uh, genuine Swiss tanks so yeah it's kind of like the Chinese in a sense even though the Chinese have like mostly Russian copies for the later tiers and they have like American tanks and Japanese tanks at the lower tiers so it's like that kind of concept all right yeah now as always pause this video if you want to read through everything because it will take too long but here is the tier 1, it is the Renault FT-17, very famous light tank, designed as uh, the granddaddy to current tanks because the engine compartment as well as the crew layout, so it's the crew, uh, crew fighting compartment in the middle, the engine in the back, as well as the driver in the front, so that's how the crew layout for the modern day tanks were based on. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a light vehicle, very famous, it's very popular with a lot of countries a, yeah. yeah so i mean well, keep, the, the, you, most can nations already in all of tanks use this as, a t as their tier one tank yeah they're just like two or three nations which do not have yes. a renault ft in some sort of or, or variation yeah all right i mean it's a good start but it's not going to be the same kind of play style as later you know swiss tanks because it's french yeah. All right, so at tier two, we have the Renault R35. So this thing has like crazy armor. Now, this vehicle was originally overtook by fleeing French from the Germans. So they drove this vehicle into Switzerland and they took it. So, or they- However, it was just a, it was a rumor that okay. it was that with a different, it actually was you, um, overtook yeah. from the French. Yeah. But that is most likely a uh, theory. 
yeah. on how it happened. It's not like captured. It's more like, hey, we surrender and just take it. So that kind of sense. So, so they were trying yeah. to flee from the Germans and they end up in Switzerland. Oh. Tier 3, we have the Panzer Wagon 34. So this is a British vehicle from the UK. So it's a small vehicle. It has relatively crappy armor. So originally this thing has a machine gun for the main armament, but we decided to give a 37 millimeter gun just in case because well, we propose. Yeah. yeah, because the machine gun does not do anything at tier three. Yeah. Well, again, look at the Panzer 2J. Well, it does pretty well. It has a flak. It's like a 20 millimeter. So the machine gun they used at the time was like 726. So. Yeah, uh, seven two six. Yeah. Ag- yeah, seven two six against a twenty millimeter, you know, flat cannon. Yeah, it's obviously the flat cannon. So yeah, thirty seven millimeter, <laughs> small caliber gun would be best on this vehicle at tier three. Tier four, we have the Panzer Wagon thirty nine. So this is a Czechoslovakian vehicle. So don't. I mean, you can talk too. So you don't. Yeah. You don't have to let me to take over <laughs> everything. So, what, your channel? Your, yeah. no. so this was based on the Panzer 38, so as you can uh, see. It is, the Panzer yeah. 38. Yeah, so yeah, it's like that vehicle, very famous as well. You saw this vehicle a lot in the German tech tree, so very famous, yada yada yada. No need to talk more about this vehicle. Well, there is just the uh, defense modifications. Okay. Yeah, uh, like a special new gun, uh, new engine, and... Maybe some small other differences to compare to the real thing. Okay. But overall, the major things are engine and gun. Okay. Yeah. Everybody should know this tank already at tier 4. Alright, tier 5, we have the Moag Priat 1950. Pirate. They call it Pirate? There's Pirate. No, there's no E on the end. <laughs> I call it Priat. Pre, pre, uh, okay, fine, whatever, pirate. P I R A T. Okay, fine. It spells <laughs> pirate for me. Alright. There's no E on the end, but okay, fine. This is basically. Well, because it's German and not English. Okay. <laughs> so this is actually a tank destroyer. Originally, it was conceived to be a anti tank weapon, but I decided to have it as a medium tank because it's enclosed with a enclosed turret so it's more well it could be a tank destroyer it could be a medium but since we're going down the medium tank line and we don't have a medium tier medium tank i think this would be best like the a44 so it's like a rear mounted medium tank but yeah go ahead but don't expect the armor of the a44 yeah it's not the same armor but it has a very powerful 90 millimeter gun so it could do its job but yeah it's decent. So, again, for a medium tank on tier 5, if you 90mm mech or gun, yeah. it is gonna be massively a strong gun, a, strong, a tank with strong yeah. uh, punch, with a strong punch. Yeah, so we can, so very, yeah, yeah. We can, we can just uh, balance a lot of stuff if we have a very strong gun, such as we, ha- we can have lower DPM. rate of fire. Yeah, lower DPM and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it, I think it's more suiting to be a medium tank or it fits Overall, better, yeah. yeah, it fits better onto the medium tank line than the tank destroyer line because a lot of stuff are cramped together on the tank destroyer line. Yeah. Tier six, we have the HW thirty. So this is a multi-purpose vehicle based on the light tank HS thirty. So it has a, originally a Spano Suza. I think this was an auto cannon, was it? Uh, it was actually a man, uh, manufacturer of con- guns and yeah, yeah. As far as you may uh, can it for the na- tell it for the name. It means Hispano, Spain, Suiza, Switzerland. Oh, okay. So yeah, this was a light vehicle, only thirty millimeters at best. So yeah, we this was classified as a light vehicle in some documents as a tank destroyers in others. So we decided to do the same treatment and make it a medium with a very powerful gun but less DPM than the average. So that's the balance of this medium tank. So it has a high DP, uh, high alpha with a 90 it's millimeter. The, uh, low armor. Yeah, low armor, good, very good mobility, but low armor 
very good alpha so it's a punchy but not high dpm medium tank so it only weighs 11 tons so it's not that heavy it weighs more like a cdc on steroids yeah, than yeah. so it's a tier 6 cdc but it's small too so it's not that big of a vehicle so it's like the a 43 of the russians it's fast but it has a better gun than that vehicle yeah at tier seven okay how about you start with the higher tiers because you know more than i do so at tier seven yada 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 okay tier seven kw30 uh like it says late 1950s till early 60s yeah there remains most of time where swiss tank development really started getting gear uh that's was one of the first designs, the KW30, which is basically a very, very early prototype of the Panzer 58. Uh, only two prototypes existed, One of uh, two of them were a mock-up, uh, one of them was actually able to drive. Uh, it is more or less, looks just like a Panzer 58. Uh, it was built by the Konstruktionswerkstätte Thun, which also uh, developed the Pan 58, 60, 61, and 68. Uh, armor 120mm at best. It's really just like armor layout, more or less like the, all the other following tanks. Um, it's ornament 90mm gun or 20 pounder. So the first, so like, I, I think the first prototype has the domestic 90mm and the second yeah, prototype. Had, Second prototype had the twenty pounder, and yeah. the and the the final production vehicle was the hundred and five. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The actually uh, one main reason Switzerland designed this tank is uh, there was a just like some kind of yeah uh, fight going on because India wanted some tanks. More uh, the best is in thirty ton tanks. Germany came up with the Indian Panzer, while Switzerland came up with this. Ah, so that's how it ties in. Okay. Yeah. That's why Indian Panzer is called Indian Panzer, because it was a tank designed for the, for India. Okay. Was, did, did this vehicle use the same 90mm as the Indian Panzer? Uh, I do not know that, because it is a very, very badly documented project. Okay. Gotcha. There, ex there exists quite a lot of... Uh, data in the archives, but none of them really. Uh, you really have to order them, and yeah. which makes it quite complicated. Yeah. Okay. All right. On to tier eight. So here's the Panzer 58 as a normal vehicle. Yeah. You continue. So you you do the high tiers. I'll do the low tiers. Okay. Panzer 58, which is the very tank which got uh, somehow managed to sneak into the German tech tree according to Wargaming. Uh, I don't know, have you done uh, actually a leak on the tank? I did, yet? I did. So, I'll post the video, but I did already. Ah, okay. So, maybe you will know this tank by the time this go goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it was a medium tank was built in 1958. Uh, it is very similar to the K Cam. Yeah, KW30. Uh huh, yep. Uh, yeah. It's used the 90mm gun. Uh, later versions use the 20 pounder, and then there were 10 or 15 production vehicles which were equipped with the 105L7. Yep. So that would be implemented in the game with the L7 as a top gun. Whoa, I think it's more. If we're gonna, I think if we're going to put the L7 as a tier 8 weapon, then this thing would be like the Charioteer, which is kind of OP for a tier unless they, unless they put uh, AP ammo in it. Oh. It's like the, T, the T54, it's basically the same thing. Mm. It's a 100mm gun, just with uh, AP, which gets shitty penetration for a tier 9. Mm, okay. Then, on tier 10, you have the T62, which is APCR standard. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, but yeah, if you're gonna fire APCR, it's gonna be a little bit OP for tier eight. I mean, just yeah, so 
yeah, it's probably just gonna outshine the Centurion in a sense. But yeah, I mean, this is just what if. So. Well, this thing has burst <laughs> red armor than the Centurion. Yeah, true. True. Yeah. Okay, but it's faster though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. At tier nine, we have the Panzer sixty one. So continue. Okay. As soon as I can see the picture, yeah, Panzer sixty one was an improvement over the Panzer fifty eight. Different changes to the suspension were made to bring the hull further down to improve the uh, armor, kind of. Uh, yeah, 1961 modification. So they, uh, they change a lot. Of, they change a lot of stuff like the fire control system, I think. And yeah, some the overall more internal uh, yeah, restructuration and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the armor again is basically the same as the Panzer 58. The gun is this time around the L7105, definitely. Top speed 55, 630 horsepower engine. And weighs about 40 tons. Alright. Yo. So, so, yeah, it's. I mean, it's like the Leopard prototype in a sense at tier 9. A better armored, but slower Leopard prototype. Yep. Okay. And finally, at tier 10, we have the Panzer 68 slash 75. Or the. Or 68 yeah. slash 88 so it's wh whichever version but they're pretty much about the same with just modifications to modernize it modernize the armor and stuff like yeah. composite armor and stuff okay let's say the basic panzer 68 is just like again an improvement over the panzer 61 nothing really special there overall the gun wouldn't change and nothing would really change other than maybe better engine uh, and stuff. Yeah. However, since the Pinter 68 itself was really, really prone to uh, faults, like uh, if you put the radio up too high, mm -hmm. uh, the gun would randomly fire, or no, the turret would randomly spin. If oh. you put the, heat, the heating too high, the gun would randomly shoot. Ooh. Which would, uh, as I'm not a military expert, but I think that there are some slight problems if that would happen. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so they made multiple uh, versions of the of the Pen 68. Oh. Uh, and again, after prototype got released and everyone knew about it, it has a, had a rather bad reputation. Oh. Uh, yeah, they improved it, and at some point, 1975. They noticed the turret is quite small. It used the, st the same turret as the Pan 61, which c was considered small. Okay. So they made a wider turret uh, for more space. Uh, I don't think the height of the turret really got changed. So basically, the width of the turret, maybe the length. Mm. Uh, and then the Pan 68, 88. It's the same story, 1988 modification, mm -hmm. with on a 1968 tank, mm -hmm. uh, it mainly had improved armor, mm. thickness. So this thing will fall in between like the AMX 13 or 30B and the Action X Centurion in the terms of armor yes. and playability. So if it's somewhere exactly. in there, yeah. All right, I'll do the lower tiers. So at tier four for the tank destroyers, we have the Jagdpanzer 38, the Swiss modification into the G13. So this has a lot of changes from the original Hetzer. So, but it's a Swiss modification, and you can tell by the muzzle brake on the gun as well as the gigantic spare road wheel on the side. But it's like the Hetzer, so it has very thick armor yeah. for tier four. 60 millimeters at the front, but only eight at the sides, so pretty decent at the front. Well, basically, the hatcher, but just a uh, post war modification, yeah. also used different engines. Yeah, so this thing the power to weight ratio is only about 10 ish, so it's not gonna be that fast, but it's still pretty decent as a tier 4 tank destroyer. At tier 5, we have the oh boy, you have to pronounce this for me. 
the Nahkampfkanone? Yeah, yes, oh. that's pretty much it. Okay. The Nahkampfkanone 1. Yeah, so this is a experimental Swiss tank destroyer that saw some action, but only one was ever built. Now, there were two versions. The OS 1 was the tank destroyer that has a 75mm, and OS 2 was the artillery version. So this is also basically the tier 4 artillery that we planned has a 105mm derp gun at tier 4, so there were two versions of this vehicle. It is somewhat decently fast if it can rev up, but the engine power is not that good. So the power to weight ratio is only 10 or so, so this thing yeah. is not that fast. Is, as you might see uh, like on the suspension, it is basically a lengthened uh, uh, Panzer 38. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. a little bit longer, but yeah. Yeah. Also, if you look at the right, at the, at the left pictures, mm -hmm. the left one, the top one is the Asphyrum 1. Yeah. The bottom one is the Asphyrum 2. So the yeah. artillery version has a smaller superstructure, or the encased uh, gun shield, whereas the tank destroyer version has a taller superstructure. So that's, and the gun's different. But yeah, these are the two versions. Alright, at tier 6 we have the Moag Scorpion. Now this is like a low tier... Borsig. Borsig, yeah. Like a Waffentrigger Borsig. Romantail Borsig. So it has pretty much no armor, but has a very powerful 90mm gun. You can have a stock 57mm uh, anti-tank gun, but we can move on to the 90mm Mechar gun. It has a crew of 3. It should be relatively fast, but engine power should be under 200 horsepower, and the weight is probably under 10 tons. So this is a very light tank destroyer. But it's, it. yeah, you, you <laughs> sh I think this is a very good competition against like the Hellcat for tier six. So this thing is pretty decent, just without armor. Now turret is fully traversable, so it's like a Hellcat, but this thing is a little bit smaller, so I expect to have better camouflage rating. Alright, you do the tier 7 and ups. <laughs> hey. Moak Pirate 1960. Uh, like you, as you can see, as a tier 5 medium tank is the Moak Pirate 1950. It's just a later variation of the tank, open topped. You might think it looks a lot like the Scorpion, mainly because the Scorpion is kind of the predecessor of that thing. Oh really? Yeah, it, it, it says I've read it somewhere just yesterday. Oh. Uh, but it is, in fact, our different tanks. Okay. It looks more like uh, the Krupp Steyr Waffentrigger, the one that's uh, coming at tier 7 with the 88mm. Yeah. You have to see, it is really more like a rear, a rearish turreted TD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it has uh, the same weapon as the tier six uh, scorpion, but it should be a little bit faster to balance out for a higher tier. So it's like yeah, the same. Heads. Yeah, it's like the same concept with the Hellcat and the T twenty five slash two at tier seven. So we're trying to give it that kind of a feel. It's somewhat a little bit bigger, but not that much. Alright, tier 8. Okay. Wait. Did I miss the tier 8 slide? <laughs> oh, please. Oh, there is the tier 8. <laughs> it got shipped out of order. Alright, so we'll do the tier okay, 8 first. So... <laughs> okay. Uh... This is a Kanonia Panzer. Well, not really. It is just uh, like in, with like the KW30. Uh, there were exact some sort of competition on who can build a better Kanonia Panzer. Uh, Henschel did the Dar version. There was another uh, version which I do not really know, and there was a Swiss Moak version, which is called the HM13. Gepard or Cheetah or just the Moak Ge Gepard. Uh, this one was not the one which got accepted into the Canonic Panzer program. Uh, it was 
not Hensel either. It was the third one, which nobody really cares or knows about. Okay. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's basically it's really more or less Knorni Egg Panzer. Okay. So it has a smoother hull design than the Kananan Yak Panzer. The Kananan Yak Panzer has a increased frontal fighting compartment and the engine deck is lower, whereas this vehicle has just a slab on the front. So it's just like one whole shape than the chisel shape on the Kananan Yak Panzer. But yeah, it's like that vehicle. It has a 90mm gun like the RU251. It's relatively fast. So this is like um, the normal version of a tier 8 premium Kananan Yak Panzer that we place at the Swiss tech tree. So just in case, but yeah. If you already know the Kananan Yak Panzer, then this is basically the prototype version of that. Or one of the prototype version. All right, tier nine, go ahead. This is the Moak Typhoon. Again, a very, very badly documented project. Uh, it is well, probably one of a first tank at tier 9. It is really, really fast. It has absolutely no armor. Uh, even tier 7s can take this thing apart. It is very sneaky and it has low uh, lowish alpha damage compared to the other uh, tier 9 TDs. Even lower than the tortoise. Uh, however, it uses the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun, which over the tortoise uh, would have more penetration, mm -hmm. uh, heat and APCR, uh, but 10 less alpha damage, but probably with about the same DPM. Mm -hmm. uh, its top speed is 70 km per hour, so we'll have Hellcat levels of speed, 575 brake horsepower, and a weight of 25 to 30 tons. So it will be very, very maneuverable and very, very fast. Very sneaky, but no armor, no turrets. Yeah. Yeah, one quick note. If we're going to give this thing the same DPM as a tortoise, the tortoise has the best DPM out of all tank destroyers in the game. 4,000. Yeah. You go, you go give this thing the 4,000 DPM? It's broken. <laughs> yes. Well, give it, it's... Give it to one less. Okay, only 200 <laughs> less. Okay, 3,800. <laughs> but yeah, it's very sneaky. It's supposed to be very fast with the L7 gun. And it has no turret, so this thing should have amazing camouflage values. Though, you have a fixed mounted gun, so you have to shift the vehicle to shoot. Now, originally, this was uh, Mizuteo's tier 10 uh, tech destroyer, but I feel the L7 is not going to do that well as a tier 10 tank to short gun because most tier 10s has at least 120 millimeter that does at least 400 damage so at least 400 or so like the object 263 so yeah it was kind of underwhelming as a tier 10 vehicle so i placed it at tier 9 and here is the tier 10 tank to short that i propose so i'll talk a little bit more about it but it's undocumented post-war projects considering a medium tank to replace the centurions that the Swiss were using. So the Swiss were taking other tanks from different nations like the AMX-13s, the centurions, as well as the M47 Patton's and other tanks. So they were try trying out a lot of mediums and trying to compete with their own Panzer 58s and 68s. But this was a really scarcely documented project where they didn't talk that much about it and the only remnants are models as you can see here so it's like the t28 concept in a sense where only the models exist whereas the actual like dimensions of the tank does not so as you can see this is a rear mounted somewhat of a medium slash tank destroyer type of vehicle so it could carry a l7 Royal Ordnance gun, but this version had a 120 millimeter smoothbore Rumtail made gun, which fires, you know, the armor piercing fin stabilized discarding Savin. And that thing is a little bit too advanced for the tank, so we decided to give it a 120 millimeter rifle gun, likely the L1, which is the British copy of the American M58. 
the gun that's on the M103 or T110E5, or the L11A5 120mm Royal Ordnance. So this gun is the Chieftain's gun, which should be coming with the Chieftain Mark II to replace the FE215B. So yeah, we're going to give a very big caliber gun onto a lightly armored vehicle to be a tank destroyer. So this vehicle should be what the Waffentrager E100 would be, in my opinion. So it should be very Not mobile. Really. Yeah, but the Waffentrager E100 is gigantic. So this thing is smaller. It's well hidden and has a very traversable turret with very good penetration. Not that big of an alpha, but DPM should be very high. So this is the what the essence of the Waffentrager line should be at tier 10 than the Waffentrager E100. So this is what I proposed. But it's more fitting to a tier 10 tank destroyer than the Typhoon, in my opinion. All right. All right, yo. All right, at tier five, we have the, oh boy. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> <coughs> okay, let me try. Selbstverhaubitze A mixed 13, 10,5 cm variant of here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> so this is the Arturi ver version of the AMX-13. So there were a lot of AMX-13 variants, like a missile launching system, uh, anti-aircraft system, you know, they did a lot of stuff with the chassis of that vehicle. So this is the Arturi version. It's like the AMX-13 F3, but it has a roof or sh fighting compartment shield than the Expose F3. So this is uh, Arturi. It's like the tier five version. The AMX, what that thing is called, I have no idea. AMX 13 something. Yeah, it has 105 millimeter as well. So, it's that French tier 5 scumbag. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it's like that vehicle, but it's based on the AMX 13 chassis a little bit more. So it shares a lot of resemblance with the light tank. So it's a tier 5 artillery. At tier 6, we have the 105 millimeter. Oh god, how boo. How bits it? How bits it? Okay. So this is a modification to the G13 Hetzer. So they mounted a gigantic 105mm howitzer and they use it as a artillery piece or, you know, assault vehicle type of weapon. So yeah, it has a very big caliber gun or you can mount the, uh, the 75mm than the 105mm. So from the Panther. So you can mount a better anti-tank gun, but we decided to make it as an artillery piece. So this thing has armor for artillery, but it's a tier six. So it's not going to be that fast, but yeah, artillery, what can you do? All right, you talk about tier seven and up. <laughs> okay. So basically G tier seven, eight and nine are more or less the same tank, just different variations. This for example is the suddenly striking Panzer Haubitz 66. AK also known as M109. The Paladin. Yeah, American okay. Paladin, if you already know it. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, armor is pretty much shit. Its ornament is a 155mm gun, the L23. Uh, top speed 60, so basically, it is really a lot like the French artilleries. Uh, very fast, no armor, rotating turret, 155. So in order to tell the difference in comparing this vehicle to the French line, I decided, or we decided to make it a little bit bigger. Well, this vehicle is a little bit bigger than the Lorraine uh, artillery pieces. So this vehicle is not as well hidden, but it has the same accurate 105 155 millimeter guns, so it does the same accuracy as well as the quick aim time. Just less alpha in comparison to the rest, like the GW Tigers and stuff. So, okay, tier 8. Tier 8, uh, basically the same thing, just with a longer gun. Uh, it's a Panzer with a 66 slash 74. So a conversation model between 1966 version and the 1974 version. Uh, again, longer gun, more alpha, uh, same accuracy. 
yeah, still very quick. So it's very shifty. Yeah. And lastly, we have the tier nine version. <laughs> yeah, uh, M109 Panzer Beta 74. Uh, it has the 15.5 centimeter howitzer 1974 L39. So basically, the rate of fire, uh, rate of fire would be a little bit improved to, to the tier eight, but damage and accuracy would be pretty much the same mm -hmm. compared to, to the tier eight. So if you already played through the French artillery line, they have about the same 155 millimeter gun from tier six and onwards but the only difference is the accuracy and a little bit better aim time and the reload but the alpha and the splash radius is mostly the same so these vehicles are like that but these are not as shifty as the french but they're bigger too so mm, that's a counterbalance to tell the difference between yeah. this and the french all right and tier 10 we have the Panzer Canon 68 so yeah. You go ahead. Uh, Panzer Canone 68 uh, is one of the prototypes of the version uh, of the, yeah, Swiss basically tried to make an SPG on the chances of a Panzer 61 or 68. So if you would shoot it at it frontally, it would have maybe some troll, some troll is hell armor, just like the Conqueror gun carriage. As you can see, 120mm armor. Uh, armament is a 155, Panzer Kanone 68. Yeah, top speed 55.5, horsepower 66, 47 tons. So, not as shifty as a tier 7, 8, and 9. It is very likely larger, but it already has a bigger gun. So this would be very, really a lot like the Bad Chat 155, either 55 or 58. Whether we want, we're not really sure if it is going to be outloading or not. Hmm. In real life, it reused an loading automatic loading system. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be uh, yeah bigger than the Bad Chat artillery, but yeah. It's <laughs> Less alpha than the Americans, the T-92, in a sense. About the same size or so. Yeah. At tier 3, you have a premium, the Moag Lecter Panzer. So this is basically a blueprint light tank. So, a fun tank. Yeah. No dimensions were given, so everything's X'd out. But yeah, it's a tier 3 light tank. It could it's have the... the looks, yeah, yeah the gun could. looks a lot late tier 3-ish. Yeah. It could have the same weapon as a Leopard, the tier 5 German light tank, but... Mm. At tier 5, we have the... You you talk about this one, I'll talk about the M47. Alright. This tier 5 premium is a Nahkampf Kanone 2. Uh, there were different versions, one of them used the 75, and one of them used a 105mm gun for testing purposes only. Uh, if we can get a Swiss tech win, if this thing is going to be implemented as a premium tank, we will see the 75mm L49. A uh, special thing about this thing is it is. Uh, yeah, it has 70mm of armor frontally. So low tier tanks, tier 3 and 4, will have quite some trouble going through this thing. Uh, you may think it 70 millimeters of armor i sure is slow but it isn't it goes 50 kilometers per hour it has a 300 horsepower engine and weighs 24 tons so approximately 12 horsepower per ton ratio so kind of sluggish but it can reach its top speed definitely yeah but think about it this way even though this tank has 70 millimeters of frontal armor has only a 75 millimeter L49, which has about 110 millimeters of penetration, like the stock Stug 3G. Or, or the Stug 4. Yeah, it's the same gun as as the Stug 4. So, that gun is a 75 millimeter L48, I believe. 
So about the same penetration in terms. So this thing is not going to penetrate a tier 7, but it's a bully at tier 5. Alright. And at tier 8, we have the premium M47 pen. Now originally, I want to put this thing as the premium, or not the, the normal tank, then a premium for the Swiss. So normally, I want to put this thing as the tier 9 Spanish medium tank, because it did serve the Spanish army. But yeah, I decided to make a 90mm version with the Swiss, and the Spanish could have the M47E2. So that's the 105mm version with the L7. This is the original version with a 90mm gun. So at best, the armor is okay. It's like a Pershing, but a little bit worse. Only 100mm at best as a 90mm gun. The M36. And top speed is quite fast. So it weighs about 44 tons. So it's like a Pershing tank, but it's fitting. I mean, it does share the lack of armor for most Swiss mediums. But the gun should be relatively decent, and this should use to train up your crews for the Swiss, more or less. Now, we did consider the Centurion as another alternative to Tier 8, but that vehicle, I think if you're going to put the 20 pounder with the Centurion, it's more or less the same as the Centurion Mark 1 at Tier 8 for the British, which there's already a vehicle for that, so... So basically, yeah, I decided to go with the M47 stock at tier 8. So basically, in conclusion and overview, the medium tank branch should have very decent mobility and high penetration, very accurate guns. But to balance, we have to have an average DPM and armor. So it's falling between the AMX 30B and the Action X Centurion. So somewhere between there. So in comparison to the Czechoslovakians, the Czechs has Russian made 100mm guns at higher tiers so this will have the L7 in comparison to the lower alpha for the Czechs but it's the armor is about the same so the DPM should be about the same as the Czechs just a little bit different play style in comparison the tank destroyers would have very good camouflage rating and superior gun handling and penetration to counterbalance we have less than average alpha and dpm and armor so it's like the waffen trigger line with slightly more health because they're slightly a little bit less concealable i think but that's up for debate and artillery branch will be fairly mobile with accurate guns like the french but the trade-off is less than average alpha and slightly better blast radius than the french so that's the trade-off all right do you have anything to add to that uh, not really just like uh, just uh, try to share this video a lot because I kind of want the world game to see this to uh, to uh, poke them with a stick and say look guys you're missing out on a chance yeah originally the the goal of this project <laughs> is because we saw the Panzer 58 and we thought like it's kind of disappointing to have all these materials and not introduce a Swiss line or a Polish or Hungarian line so yeah this video serves as a what if we have the swiss branch into the game and what does the swiss branch contain so this gives us slightly yeah. better insight to that country and what they have for our offer, uh, offer to water tanks but yeah and as you can see switzerland does not have a lack of tanks unlike some other nations yeah we so... actually can cover three com one more or less complete uh, branches. branches. Yeah. So yeah, the only full branch is the medium tank, but then it's a TD, which starts from tier four, three, and now tier four, above TD and artillery start from tier four upwards. Yeah. So so I, not really complete, complete, but it's better than yeah, it's better than having nothing, right? So everything. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I mean it's. All time relative. So, initially, when they introduced the B2 and the H35 as premium vehicles for the Germans, even though they were actually French vehicles, so time would take it. Uh, I mean, later on, those vehicles were actually implemented because the French were introduced. But uh, before the French were actually in the game, those were German vehicles. 
So we might see an introduction of the Swiss line, and we might have some of these vehicles featured in this vi uh, video to be shown as the actual vehicles for the Swiss, but only time will tell. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's time a... and sharing the video. Yeah. <laughs> I really so, don't easily like that, but this time I really, really, uh, I'm proud. Swiss people are kind of proud. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, normally we would do like um, a petition or something, like to t like have everybody sign a petition to tell like Wargaming to implement a line because everybody would like it and you will make profit if they introduce it. But since everybody doesn't like signing petition, so I would suggest you guys like this video. A simple click on the like and we can show to the producers and developers that, hey, we might be introducing a new branch because a lot of people would like this video and like to see these vehicles in the game. So sorry to ask you guys to do this, but press a like if you like these contents and maybe we show it to the developers. Maybe, hey, they might like it and we'll do some sort of celebration when the Swiss come out. Okay, like, you know, like you said, really share it, share it mostly to maybe read a status report, yeah. but to any other blogger, maybe on Russian server or on the American server. Yeah. Uh, anyone with kind some with some sort of influence and also to the, the uh, producers of all of tanks. Yeah. So does this video is seen a lot all over the place. Because, but, like I said, the TDs are some going to be something very new, something mm -hmm. you have not seen before. Yeah, I most mean, tier ten TDs are behemoth. Yeah, they have armor, have like gigantic size. There's no sneaky tank destroyers for tier tens. So I wanted to have a sneaky traditional tank destroyers with the Waffentrager line, but everything led up to the Waffentrager E100, which is basically a gigantic barn with no camouflage rating and no armor so that's kind of disappointing with the swiss we can have a very crazy like super good camouflaged tank destroyer with lower than average alpha but it's very sneaky and very mobile so that's very interesting but oh well only time will tell so thanks to mizuteo for being on the guest or guest well, list. thank you for having me <laughs> It's kind of awkward to do the video with the second commentary, so everybody's uh, stumbling over the lines and stuff. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, peace. Or do you want to say something else? No. <laughs> okay. So, well, greetings from Switzerland. I'll all say it for him, but I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Sí.